to know your beauty more than a thought more than a glance I want to see your beauty this is what I desire
I ask you to change songs. I want to hear this song. And if you'll just close your eyes all over the sanctuary. If you don't know the song, you have to keep your eyes open. But if you know the song, find yourself lost in Him. Come on, for a minute, say. Let yourself just be with Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, this young lady wrote this song. It's right from her heart. The desires of her heart is for this thing.
Father, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, that you do change us. Even today, Father, when we go into these tanks of water, God, let us see your face as we go under the water and we come out with resurrection power. Let us see the face of God. We know we're going to hear your heartbeat. We know we're going to feel you, God. Let us see your face upon the people that are brand new before you even today, Father. We thank you, we bless you, we give you praise, and we give you the, all the glory. And let all God's people say amen. Turn around, high-five two people, and have a seat, amen. Just bless somebody sitting next to you. Don't go walking all over the place. I want to preach. All right? You all right? right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Saints, we can find our seats. I really, it's already late. Already late. And uh, uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit. And y'all, most of you know what happened Friday and over in our off the Gandhi Bridge, but I just want to talk to you for a minute. And... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In case you haven't heard or you're not on Facebook or you haven't heard the rumor mill here at Rock Church, uh, how many people know that uh, I love to go fishing? I am a fisherman. I love to go fishing. Well, we went fishing. We caught, and this is not a fish story. We caught so many fish, it wasn't funny. But at the end of the day, the fish tried to catch us. Our boat sank. And it was a very scary situation. We were in the middle of the bay out there by the Gandhi Bridge, and there wasn't a boat in sight when we went underwater. We took on a little water, and within three minutes, we were under. Excuse me, we were underwater. The boat went down that fast, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I have found three men that I go to war with in any battle in the world. Amen. These three men were so in tune. I I'd never seen adrenaline kick in so much in our lives. I think Charlie actually took four or five steps on top of the water. Amen. Um, some of us were thrown overboard. One of us grabbed all the fishing rods. That was cool. I mean, everybody's fishing rod but pastors. Amen. I mean, honestly, and the worst part about it is we run a boat out of a place called IC Sharks. And we saw a lot of hammerheads that day swimming around us. And we went under the water. I'm telling you, God's, God's in control, saints. We were worshiping. The waves started kicking up a little bit. We were in the I was in the, I stopped fishing. These guys were still fishing, and, and the waves was kicking up, was bouncing me around. I finally said, "I think it's getting a little rough, guys. Let's go in." And we were just pulling the anchor up when we got swamped. A wave came over the boat, and it was too late. There was nothing we could do. It, it, it sunk us that quick. We were on a, like a about an 18, 19 foot, 20 foot uh, Boston Whaler. I mean, people know Boston Whalers won't go all the way down. Say thank God, amen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll leave that one alone real quick. I take it out of my brain. Stay spiritual. Stay spiritual. But uh, we thank God we're we're here. We're alive. Some some good Samaritan. We were his boat came. This came under the bridge. He must have been on the other side of the bridge. He came through. Before we know it, we had more firemen there than they do at a five alarm fire. We had rescue. We had helicopters overhead. We had the police boat pull up. It was it was it was something. Adrenaline got flowing, and all those good things happened. We're all safe. So I see sharks called me last night. I got to call them back today. I wasn't my boat. My 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 phone was the only one that wasn't in waterproof casing. I pulled it out to call I see sharks the time we were coming back in. And as I was talking to them, we went underwater. And I would say we're by the bridge, and that was the last thing I said. And my phone got soaked. 
and uh, they came. They were there within seven minutes, and they were in a no weight zone. They were kicking up some weight getting to us, man. They were. They come flying up to us, and a policeman happened to be driving across the Gandhi Bridge and saw us go under. He's the one that made all the phone calls, and everybody there within minutes. Charlie, I don't know if he ever showed your thing on Channel 10 or not, but Charlie, they interviewed Charlie, and and uh, I had the police. The police were checking us out to make sure we weren't drunk. Thank God we're all, only the only thing we ever get drunk on is the new wine. Say amen. Man. But uh, it was a good, it was a scary thing. But I saw I saw three men in this in this ch- church you, with Charlie, Pastor Tim, and Doug that you could go to war with in the minute saints, and they got your back. Amen. Once we once we were secure, our main thing was making everybody else make sure everybody else was secure. We all got life jackets on immediately, and and it was just it was just a God. God was in the midst of us, saints. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned around and showed his hand, our saving power of God. And as we were driving home, Charlie was driving my van home, and I always let him drive. I don't know why, but I always let him drive. And I guess he's tallest. He, uh, he wins. I mean, I don't know. We were driving home, and an airplane flew over. I said, anybody want to go flying with me? And they both went. <laughs> I don't think so, Pastor. I get stories no matter where I go. Brother Kakuza, uh, he, he called me last night. So I saw it on Facebook. My God, you're so much like Bishop. It ain't funny. No matter where you go, God gives you a story. I said, I said and uh, to Marcy, she said she doesn't know whether she wants to fly to Boston with me or not. She might fly up a day early to beat me there. Amen. That made people know God's in control. Saying, you ain't going nowhere until God says so. Say amen. Let me tell you guys something. My wife posted on Facebook on Throwback Thursday our wedding picture. If anybody saw it or not, uh, of uh, Kim was Kim wasn't quite 21 years old yet, and she posted that and, uh, and she made a little statement saying, "My husband robbed the cradle." And I said, and I posted on that, but yeah, but she's still hot. Amen. After all these years, but I was sitting there Friday night, and they're all. Kim's in bed sleeping. I'm sitting out in the, in the living room. And, and the reality, what could have happened, started hitting me. It could have been the last day I ever saw this woman until she came to glory with me. I know athletes, professional athletes, that the same thing happened to them out in the golf, and they never found, they found their boat but never found them. They didn't survive it. Yeah. I mean, we were safe because our boat wasn't going to go underneath water. They didn't have a Boston where it went on. Theirs went on underwater and came back up later. But I just started thinking about what marriage and what being with one another really is. Those of you that are married, I want you to I want you to just look at your spouse for a minute and realize that person just gave you their entire life to share with. I want you to think about that. And when you are abusive or you misuse her, that's what the word abuse means, I'd normally use something. You're taking someone that has literally gave you their life to share with you for all, for all eternity, as far as that goes, but for a whole lifetime on the earth. And be grateful for what you have, saints. Don't look elsewhere. Let me tell you what, the grass is not greener underneath the water. It's really not greener on the other side. God's given you gifts. And I told Kim that. I told her that yesterday when we were out together. I said, I realize, honey, we've been been together over 32 years. And I love her more now, not because of this, I've always said this, more now than the day I married her. And I I couldn't even wait for her father to bring her down the aisle. I went halfway up and met her. I couldn't wait to marry this little girl. And I love her more now than ever. And to think she has picked me to give her life to, to share her life with. What an honor, saints. What an honor when you look at your spouse and think of all the world who they could have picked. And they picked you to spend their life with. To give you everything they have. Somebody should say amen. Even in the church here, of all the people, all the churches you all could have been decided to be on on this morning, you picked to share this day with us. I feel honored. Amen? Don't ever let go of the gifts of God that God gives to you. Can I hear an amen? 
with that mentality. I didn't set it up for this, but can we take up the offerings and the gifts? Everybody get your offering envelope. You don't have, anybody need an offering envelope to put their gift in? Raise your hand. Can we have one of the ushers please jump up real quick? Any hand up and get them an offering envelope? Anybody else you need an offering envelope? Listen, if you need one, raise your hand. Take advantage of it while we still have the ability to write this off your taxes. Amen. The day's going to come. Believe me, the American church is going to lose this right. Hallelujah. Anybody else need an envelope? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give, Lord. Bless your people as we come to give our tithes and our offerings. It's in Jesus' name we pray and let everybody say, Amen. Bring your tithes and your offerings forward, saints. We don't take an offering. The Bible says bring your offering to the house of the Lord. Amen. We like to bring it up to the altar. If you can't bring it, we'll, we'll bring an offering basket back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your people, God. Children can be released for junior church. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I haven't even preached yet. I feel like I've talked two messages already. Um, I see we have some visitors here. You, can, I have a, can I have a lift a hand of any first or second time visitors? Wave at us in the sanctuary here. I know we said some visitors. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome to Rock Church. From England, God bless you. That's a visitor, amen. Once it's England, not in New England, we're all right, amen. amen. <laughs> Told you I'd get even. I knew I would for the days, Alan. Amen. Thank you, Father. You know, I don't know who you guys are. I know you've been here a couple times in the church here. I really don't know who you are, but I hear I got a word of the Lord for you guys. I don't know if you guys believe in the prophets, you understand it. But God was speaking to me when I was praising worship. I looked back and saw you too. And God says there's desires in your heart. This may sound very general, but God, I'm just fighting it up here. Every time we get somebody in the church, God gives me a word for them. But God says you get desires in your heart. And sometimes they've fallen away. You felt they fell aside. And God says don't let go of them. Every desire God places in your heart is from God, and the desires will come to pass. They haven't been forgotten yet. They're still alive in your heart. And if not, God says today I'm going to resurrect all the desires that you put in your heart. You're men and women of God, and God says, I'm going to use you, and I'm going to use you. So the day he takes your breath or he comes back, you're going to be used of the Lord, says the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Saints, listen to me. My desire, I'm going to tell you right now, I got a new life on purpose. Friday, when I came out of the water. I was baptized afresh, amen. I got a new lean on life, and I know my purpose is yet to go forward. And when you still got purpose, you need to throw your hands in the air and thank God that you still got. As long as you got purpose, you're going to have breath. You ain't going nowhere. Now, you may decide to take yourself through the pit of hell and back out, and that's your choice, not God's. God decides to order your steps if you'll listen to him. How I many of you got the Holy Ghost? If you're born again, you better raise your hand. If you ain't baptized in him yet, we got that to offer too. And the Holy Spirit. But he's going to order your steps. Amen. Well, that was weak. Thank you, Pastor Caleb. He'll order your steps, brothers. You agree? Anybody else agree with me? Come on, he'll order your steps. Listen, I've been teaching, I have a book, it's called uh, The Secret of the Secret Place. It's 52 chapters long, I preach a chapter a week, we've got a couple weeks where I won't be here, and we got guest speakers and, and all that stuff, so it's going to take us over a year to preach it, but it, it, it's not, you don't have to hear one message to hear the next one. It's good teaching, I gave one of the books to uh, uh, David there, and David's pastor, what a great book, if you haven't got this book yet, shame on you, it's written by Bob Scorch, uh, Scorch storage, whatever. It's called The Secret of the Secret Place. Buy the book. I'm out of them. I bought five, gave them away already. Get the book. You'll be blessed by it. 
and you know, I'm on lesson I'm on lesson 12 today, the secret of humility. Last time we preached, I preached on the secret of violence, and right behind it comes humility. Isn't that wonderful? Violence isn't what we would think violence means. It doesn't mean we need to be killing people and hurting people. It means you got to do it with a full desire. You got to do it with everything in you. You got to find that secret place, and the secret place is the dwelling place of God. Point to the dwelling place of the Spirit of God. This is the dwelling place right here. I am. I'm the, come on. I'm the Ark of the Covenant. So are you. You're the dwelling place of the living God. Don't worship me. Worship the Spirit of God that's in you. But how do you do that? By getting out of the way and let him do what he wants to do. Violently, with such a passion. That's what that word violence means. It means you're going to do it with such a passion that it drives you. George just got driven up here. He went, man, I wanted to rap. Well, go home. Buy me a present. Wrap it up, amen. I didn't say that, but I thought it was a good idea to get it in right now, amen. But that's what, he wants you to have a violence into your spirit, a desire that all you want is God. Amen. In your workplace, sure you got work to do, you're supposed to work, but boy, order your steps. You should be the one singing and dancing and shouting and just sitting there saying, you should sing in the choir. I do. When I get with my church, I sing, come on. I, I can sing. In there. When I start singing, our worship leader's not here today, our, baby, our grandbaby's being baptized or something, christened or something like this. Dedicated, we don't we don't christen or baptize babies. We dedicate babies like Jesus was. But anyhow, they were they were in there and uh, that's where they are. But she, every time I sing, I see her go. Uh -huh. The Bible doesn't say sing in every note. It says make a joyful noise. Ah! I can make a noise, amen. I don't know how joyful that was, but it felt good coming out of me, amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord with all your heart, but do it with passion. Listen, my wife told me about three weeks before I told her she loved me. I was scared to death. I wasn't a good husband. I was married once before I met her, and I wasn't a good husband. I wasn't a Christian, and I got saved. And I didn't know how to be a Christian husband. And when she told me she loved me, and I knew I had all these feelings for this young lady, I didn't want to hurt her the way I did my first wife. I wasn't a good guy when I was I was a junkie off the streets of Baltimore. And I didn't want to hurt her. So when she said it to me, I said, thank you. She got out of the car crying and ran into the house. I spent the next three weeks in marriage seminars finding out what a Christian husband was supposed to be like. I had to know. This girl was in love with me. I had all these feelings for her. I had to know. And I'll never forget the third weekend when I found out I drove home and knocked on her door. By the time I got it, it was about 10 o'clock. Her daddy answered the door and went, uh-oh. Ernie go, uh-oh. He went, can I help you? I said, it's Kim here. And she come walking down the steps. Her steps were in the middle of her row home. She walked down the steps. She never got all the way off the steps. And she looked at me standing in her door. And I went, I love you. She went, thank you. And turned around and walked up steps. <laughs> but when I realized, when I found out, I had a passion. Boy, the next day I met her at the bus stop. I knew she took, took a day off work. Met her at the bus stop. She finally, after much persuasion and everybody else staying at the bus stop, I think she got in just to stop from being embarrassed. But baby, I love you. Please get out. I'll explain to you. Baby, baby. But, All right. I think she was more embarrassed than anything else. She got in the car. She got to work. She got flowers every hour. Come on, I got passion. Broke with passion in, amen. That's what it takes sometimes. You gotta let your passion come out. You gotta let it come out once in a while. And the rest is history. She shared her she shared her life with me. Her whole life with me since then. She's known me more than she longer than she's I mean, than she didn't know me. We've been married longer than she was I can't tell you how old she was. She gets mad at me. We've been married 32 years, so I told you how old she was when she got married. Then you can figure out her age, and I'm in trouble. 
I said it too many times here. It'll probably slip out later. I won't tell you she was 20. I won't do that, okay? But uh, see, <laughs> our violent pursuit of God must be wedded to the humility or a humble spirit. If not, we're going to become like some of the other religions that will blow people up. Come on. That don't believe in our ways. The Spirit of God is a gentleman. He entered you. He entered Christ. He entered Jesus as a gentleman. He, he saw a dove. And a little dove didn't fly out of heaven and land on a shoulder like the painting will show you. It came as a dove. Dove represents love and gentleness in the Bible. The Spirit of God is centered in him as a dove. And that's what he's done on each one of you. But yet he comes with such power. The Spirit of God isn't a it. Somebody say, thank God. It is a he. And he entered you with such power to defeat any enemy that could come against you. That's the power of the Spirit. But he comes upon you with such gentleness. That's where you've got to learn grace. You've got to learn mercy. So how many people know you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for grace and mercy? I could point fingers at people that'd be dead in this place. Some of you would be dead. Oh, Wesley, my God, you've been dead 400 times. Back there, too. Should be dead already if it wasn't for grace of God. Are you all with me? Listen to what word humility is the foundation for all prayer. To be humble. It literally should be your foundation for prayer. Humility says this, Lord, I am empty without your fullness. I am broken without your holiness. I am helpless without your strength. I am clueless without your wisdom. Apart from you, I am nothing. The Bible says the most righteous thing I've done Without God, even with God, the majority thing I've done would be filth. But once the Spirit of God starts directing me and ordering me, it becomes righteous. I'm holy. Well, that's weak. You're holy. I know I get more out of that one, amen. Some of you must know me too much, amen. I don't know. I'm holy because God says I'm holy. Because I got the Spirit of God living in me, I'm righteous. I like that, righteous. That sounds hippie, doesn't it? I'm righteous. But I am. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do good. Not for evil. If I'm doing evil to you, a wrong spirit. When that boat was capsized, that wasn't God. That's why you, I told this, I told these guys that we were sitting there coming back in. I mean, once we got in the boat, we were all saying what, how fast it happened. Then we, it was only about maybe a 10, 12 minute boat ride back in, 15. And I, we all got real silent. He got real silent. He just told me he was tired. But we all got real silent. I think we were contemplating what could have happened. And I told him, I said, Do you realize how quickly the enemy could have killed this church? right there in that water. Both the pastors, one of the elders, and and Doug. I looked at Doug, by the way. I said, Doug, it's a shame. We had, I said, it was really a shame. Two handicapped people and, and us. <laughs> <laughs> Doug and I are both suffering from different things in our bodies, our lower legs and hips and arthritis and different things. I said, we had two handicapped Two handicapped people in the body and you and I, Doug. I mean, come on. <laughs> but the enemy could have wiped us out. And Roy put a hurt on this church for a few years. But there's purpose. See, the purpose of God, saints, and this is what I want you to get a hold of. You've got to have a, I'm not walking around going, hey, our church, look at us. I taught everybody, 
that weightlifting isn't a whole lot. When I used to weightlift, it was all up here. When I stopped, she would fell. Right, if I lie, I fry. I better repent. Amen. But my but, but the thing is, we're 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 pressing to the mark. We're pressing in. And I want to have a spirit that just says, I love you. Come on, there's going to be doctrine issues. The perfect church isn't here yet. If it was, Christ would have came back. There's going to be problems. I got some people that won't come up, won't. Let any of their people come into Rock Church because we believe in that prophecy. And every once in a while, pastor will shatata, or who stole the Mahanda? I speak in tongues a little bit once in a while. I'm up here preaching, and the Holy Spirit will say something to me that I know I wasn't smart enough to come up with. And in the midst of it, I'll just go, because it touched me from the inside out. And it excites me when God gives me something. Every once in a while you hear me go, that's good preaching, because it wasn't in my notes, amen? It was the Holy Ghost drops it in there. I ain't patting myself on the back. I got a pair of hands somebody gave me to do that with next, next door. But instead, I just believe that God's God in the midst of it. Saints, if the Bible says do it, we're going to do it, except with snakes. We ain't hand on those snakes. I handle enough two-legged snakes to mess around with the ones that crawl on their belly. Amen? But listen to me. we got to have a right spirit. You better be broken. If you're not, I promise you, the Spirit of God will break you. Did I say that right? Did I say Satan? No, I didn't, did I? Spirit of God will humble you if you're not a, you don't humble yourself. Oh, I believe I believe who I am. I've had I've had people challenge me of who I am. And there's times I've got up in meetings, walked outside and looked at the front door and make sure my name was still on the door. I asked some of my leaders if I haven't done that. Just to prove a point. I know who I am. I know God's called me to be the head of this church. I don't have to declare it. Pastor Tim, get up here and out preach me. He ain't called to be the head of this church yet. I know who I am. I have confidence who God says that I am. And you've got to have that kind of a heart. I don't do it boldly. I do it with trembling and fear. i got people come to me with life-changing decisions. Saints, you don't think that doesn't scare me to, out, of my, out of my own skin sometimes? They want me to hear from God for them. You all with me? You think I do that flippantly? You think I prophesy over a couple? I may, they may think, oh, that was off the wall. They'll never come back here. I ain't going to tell you God said if God didn't say it. My Bible says I'm accountable for every idle word. Not every word I prophesy of God, for every word I said God said that he didn't say. How did you stand in front of God and say, God said, why did you tell them I said when it was all you? Hello? That should, that should cause you to be a, have a humble heart. Say amen. We all look at me like I'm crazy. Oh, I am. He says, I need you. I need you so desperately. This is what humility says. That's why I pour you out, pour out into you in the secret place. When you find God in your secret place, listen, he's ready to talk to you. When all other things become a shadow, a secret place isn't always your closet. You can find it right here. Can I tell you something? You had four kids up here today that remembered somebody taught them how to do a dance. They didn't even know you were back there. They didn't care if you were back there. They know they were taught a dance and they wanted to do it. I was sitting over here smiling, and then my, our dance teachers and all grabbed a hold of it and started teaching them and sharing it with them. 
Last uh, couple weeks ago, Trisha did it. I mean, uh, I always do that. Kristen did it, and Trisha did it today. And other people, flag people, where's half pint? Next door, she's teaching. She's done it with the flag kids, the kids waving flags. That's the way it's supposed to be. I ain't going to stop these kids from being up front here. I wish you would get up here and get a little silly for the kingdom. If you came up here and danced, how many people know God wouldn't have to send them? Oh, that, that's good preaching, Pastor. When, when Jesus rebuked the disciples for telling the children they couldn't come to him, I don't care how you want to picture it, what he was saying, if you would come this way, with the same enthusiasm they come with. Now, of course, we King james it. So bad. And I, I read the King James and quote the King James and all the prophesying King James and all, saith the Lord, that it says the Lord, you know, all those kind of things. But we King James, it said, forbid not the children to come unto me. What he's saying, if you acted like this, the children wouldn't have to come. They would follow their parents in the kingdom. Why don't you come like a little spirit of a child? You, after all, you are my children. Oh, God. Somebody say, yeah, thank you. Prayerlessness is almost, prayerless is almost always, if you're not praying, it's the first prideful independence that we trim back on. I can always tell. There's two signs to a pastor that always tells when people are falling back from God. One is they stop giving. The tithe comes down, starts becoming a tip. And secondly, they stop praying. There's no prayer life in them. You ask them to pray, no, I don't pray out loud. Listen, I get Tim to do pre-prayer because he does it so well. Somebody say amen. amen. Tim's fluently. He gets up here and he just speaks. He doesn't come up with a pre The only thing he does for me is I ask him always to call the harvest loose from the four corners. I believe we should do that in pre-prayer. Release the harvest from the north, the south, the east, and the west. That's the only thing he probably does religiously in the prayer. But now it's become part of him. But he prays from his heart. It's just him talking to God. That's all prayer is. Your secret place is you closing out the world and talking to God. And here's the key. Shut up once in a while. Because he wants to talk back. And he won't out-shout you. That's got Pentecostal on me. We start feeling good about ourselves, energetic. We start looking forward to our future, confidence about the path we're on, and we forget where we got it from. When I start seeing people get successful, and all of a sudden they're not here anymore, I'm going, oh, boy. Here they go. They're on a downward spin. People's businesses get blessed. Well, I'm getting blessed working five days a week. I'll start working six. Then their wife's coming in for marriage counseling. Then they start working seven, and then I they don't need. And I'm coming to church anymore. The wife can't. The wife can't get all the kids ready, so she doesn't come to church anymore. And then I'm getting a call Tuesday morning. Pastor, can we come in for counsel? I say, come to church, and I'll counsel you. Come to church regularly. How many people know my case? If everybody was coming to church and find their secret place, how many people know I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to counsel as much? The only thing I use to counsel saints is the word. I don't use what I have. Believe me, you don't want what I got. You want what God can give you. You all with me? All right, you all looking like chaos in the hailstorm. Right? Proverbs 30. God, Proverbs 30. One through three says, The word of Agar, the son of Jacob, even the, even the prophecy, the man spoken to Ithel, or whatever, even to Ithel, and, boy, these people type weird names, you shall. Surely I am more brutish than any man. I have not the understanding of a man. I n neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. If you are broken, and saints, and you understand, you don't have the knowledge. I don't have the wisdom. Solomon stood before God 
and he had a tough decision to make, and he didn't know what to make, and he cried out, I need it, I need it. God gave him wisdom. He said, God said, what do you need? I need wisdom, God, to, not, to, to minister to your people, to be the king and judge over your people. I need wisdom. God said, son, you ask for the best portion. And with wisdom came all the riches of the kingdom. But Solomon had to break the king of all of Israel. Had to say, I don't know. The chosen people of God, the head of it says, I don't know what to do. You talk about being broken and humility, humbling himself, and God says, oh, son, you ask for the best part. Oh, I can feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. You ask for the right thing. I'm going to pour it all out on you now, son. With wisdom, you're going to learn how to plant the soil. You're going to learn how to mine the gold. You're going to learn how to get the silver. I don't care if I have silver and gold out of the earth. I want it out of here, out of here, out of here, out of here. I want a mine in the lives of people. I want the best part. I want to dig into souls and find what God's got pulled out of them. You're here because you got purpose, not because mom brought you, because you got purpose to be here. You're still alive because you got purpose. He just went through a little bat. And you're still here because there's purpose. Look next to you. That's it right there. Nothing else at all. This way he's willing to share her life with you. Say amen. You all with me? I just get a little bit excited, saints. I'm not yelling at anybody. It's just excitement. I know what I was off the streets of Baltimore. I used to beat people with baseball bats, for God's sake. Now I care about you rising up. The only thing that could change me was the Spirit of God. Great wisdom, knowing I have the wisdom of the secret place. I need it. I can find God. I can enter into the secret place sitting in it. There's times I come up here because I'm being distracted by what's going on in the altar. Pastor's heart's watching it and falling in love with it. So I'll come up and turn my back to the whole church so I can find that place. I love the movie. It was on again yesterday. I love the movie for the love of the game. Everybody ever watch that? Anybody watch baseball movies? I love Kevin Costner's movie. It's, he's, he's pitching for Detroit. He knows it's his last game ever. He's pitching against the the uh, enemy's camp, you know, the New York Yankees, amen, the, the evil kingdom. And he's pitching against them. And he, and, and he writes on a baseball about the seventh inning. He sends it up to the owner saying, this is my last game no matter what. I'm retiring for the love of the game. And he pitches a perfect game against New York. He completes a perfect game against New York. What about the last nine batters were fantastic plays by the outfield. A guy jumps over the fence and robs a home run. Three infielders make diving plays, get up, throw people out. One bounces off his glove. The guy, guy shortstop taps it into the second baseman's hand. He can throw the guy out of the first by half a step. One of those kind of plays. You know, it's, it's a movie. Come on. But he did it for the love of the game. Your life to me is not a game. I have dedicated the last 15 years of my life to this church. Our marriage never suffered because my wife's heart is right along with me. Some women wouldn't put up with what my, what my wife puts up with as much as I'm gone. But she knows what drives me. She knows it's the love of this church, the love of God, what I was. And God gives me the ability. Listen, I was a ninth grade dropout. God gives me the ability to public speak and prophesy over people and shout unto God. She knows what 
they took this away from me, I might as well die. This drives me. What drives me? Watching people get changed. Guys come in, fall time after time. God, Bill, you fell, you fell so much you should be so bruised up, ain't funny. Bill's an alcoholic, and he really suffered from it, but we never let go of you, Bill. I never let go of you. I believed in you when you didn't believe in you. Now God's given him a beautiful wife and business. Sober. Six years? Seven years sober. Come on! He called me. He didn't run from me. He called me and said, Pastor, I fell again. He was drunk, and he called me. And I give him credit. He kept coming, and he kept fighting, and he kept fighting. You know how valuable he is to come up and testify at a block party? Boy, do I know. Tim, cocaine, right? Everything. Where's Georgie? You said to step out for a minute. Where are you? A professional rapper got so involved in all that junk. Now he raps for Jesus. Only junk he's involved in now is preach. Is preaching about how bad it was for his life. Come on. Got found himself a little wife ready to dedicate her life. I mean, this girl dedicated her whole marriage so far to take care of this knuckle. I mean, George. Uh, he's a knucklehead, amen. Come on, saints, you with me? Believe it or not, that's a, the breaking of God. That's not the enemy. That's God breaking you that he can use you. You two, my God. You've been hurt by the church more than you were the unchurched. But watch what God's going to do. He ain't done. I prophesied over you two already. You already know this. He ain't done. He ain't done. The giftings, the abilities he's given to you is to raise you back up. You two got gifts in you. You know how to touch these little ones up here dancing around. God's given you the abilities to touch them. Gotta do your heart good to see that. We gotta train them, equip them. This ain't tomorrow's church. This is today's church. Am I right? This is night now. This is our seed. You better water it. Unless your hearts are broken, you'll never spend a tear over them. And God just did what He had to do, allowed to have what happened to you to do, so that your hearts will be broken. And you know it ain't about the pastor. It ain't about the church. It's about the desire he put in the two of you. Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You two got so much to give. Pastor, I gave it all. No, you ain't even begun yet. You're too young. You ain't even started yet. You were just going through, my pastor would say, our necessities. Bishop John said, we were going through our trials. I would call him and say, Brother John, I had another one leave. He said, oh, you're just going through your necessities. Pull the belt, boy. Get a little tighter. Thank you for your passion, Pastor. <laughs> you all with me? Song of Solomon. Psalms, I mean, Song of David, rather. Psalms 108.1 says, Oh, God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. He says, even my glory. Even any glory I've received, God, I'm going to give it back to you. Listen, I don't receive, I don't, I ain't no glory what I've done here. Nothing. Remember, I'm in the ninth grade dropout. I ain't smart enough to do what's going on in this church. It has to be God. Only smart thing I ever did was accept God and marry her. Amen. Well, I, I can't believe she didn't shout amen. She's being humility. She's being humble right now. Later on, she'll say it to me. Amen. He abandoned his heart to God. He even gave all of his glory. How many people know when you go to heaven, you're going to be given a crown? Well, you'll be given a crown. Your children are your crown, and the jewels in your crown are your grandkids. I hope most of you remember who the only reason you have that crown. It came from the king of kings. I hope, I hope most of you remember to lay it back at his feet. Give it back to him where it belongs. Amen. 
I mean, I love that song. I can only imagine. I can't wait to the guys that are calling JC and his gang on the earth. And the big guy upstairs, I can't wait to when they're standing in front of him. He ain't going to be JC and his gang anymore, is he? Come on. Well, I want to see how quickly they get it, that the humility hits them, amen? I, I, I think I was just going to be laying on my face for the first 10,000 years. Thankful, kissing, the, kissing whatever it is, the gold or dirt or whatever it is. And thank God I made it, amen? I sure don't deserve it. If you think you did, you better get saved. If you think you deserve it, you don't. The only reason you deserve it is because our big brother bought and paid for you. Jesus Christ, amen? He gave away. Let me show you some of what, what the Bible says was David's glory. This is what he wanted to give God. His wealth, all of his honor, all of his prestige, all of his dignity, all of his splendor, all of his power. He had the glory of a psalmist and a prophet. And David laid it all down. He laid it all down when the Ark of the Covenant came back into Israel. He, he became very broken, and he danced. To the fact his wife called him an idiot, so he stripped himself, and he danced in front of him. You ain't seen nothing yet, he said. Learn to strip yourself. Don't do it now. Do it spiritually, amen? Learn to let yourself be stripped of God and then give him everything you have. I promise you the leftovers are God are better than anything you could possibly bring. Are you all with me? He took every bit of this and he presented it to the Lord in both song and praise. That was one of the reasons I wanted her to sing this song for you today. Not only did the song fit in, but she doesn't have confidence in her own music. That's a broken spirit. It's ready for God to use. And she knows it ain't her giving her the song. There's 90, most of this artwork, not 90 of it, but a lot of the artwork back there is things that she's drawn. We've had a couple of them, saw a couple of them already gone out of here. We, we use it just to re, she don't take any of the money, just puts it right back into the ministry. We up to all of her supplies back there. Every picture back there is for, Got a price on it. Except what? The boat. They're going to redo the boat. They're going to, we're going to put that on poster. Everybody in the world wants that one. We're going to put, once we get it on poster and all that and we get it up there, we'll auction off the real one with a starting bid of about $1,000. Amen. You know, the, you know the picture of the tabernacle that was painted years ago? Of Moses' tabernacle that was painted in Virginia Beach during the service. Rock Church of Virginia Beach during his service. It was actually drawn in chalk first and then going back in and painted right later. But lay all your giftings down. Lay everything you have. Sing, praise, do your thing. Testify, prophesy. We have open mics up here. If, you're, if you say something wrong, I'll, I'll just, they'll just bring you down. I'll come up and I'll talk to you later. But I'd rather you step out and do something wrong and then hold back something that, that it's supposed to bless somebody with. If you held it back, I should have prophesied, Pastor, I had a word. I'll go, you're a thief. You stole from the whole body. Don't be afraid to come up here and prophesy and shout. If it's wrong, we won't embarrass you. I won't. We'll just, they'll just bring you down and bring me up. I, I got signs with my worship team. I'll just cut you down. I'll, they'll bring you down and bring me up. Or if you go too long, we'll do, I'll cut you off with grace. I won't embarrass you. Then after service, I'll tell you why I've had people prophesy against the Word of God. They say things other than the Word. Well, how many people know the Word's the absolute? God can't change this. He won't change it for you to prophesy something different than the Word says. This is the truth. You can't change the truth because it fits what we want to say. Hello? But this is, this is your blueprint, saints. Men, we don't like to read instructions when we put things together. God didn't say read this. He said study it. Amen? You ain't got to read it. You got to study it to put your life together. Romans, I'm almost done. Romans 12, 24 says, And the nation of them which are saved shall walk in the light of, and the king of kings do bring their glory and they honor it. 
The king of kings comes into the presence. The kings of kings. One of the most hum, humble men I know was my, was my bishop, my pastor. He was a drug addict off the streets of Harlem, the Bronx, he, he, Norican. He was a Puerto Rican and lived up in New York. John Jimenez with a G. Everybody says Jimenez with a G, so they called it Jimenez. His, his, his family was from Spain originally. Here's a guy, when he was 37 years old, spent 22 years in prison. A four-time felonist. In today's society, he'd have been locked up and thrown a key thrown away, never to get out. And he got saved. He came out of prison and went to a little church service. His sister bribed him to go to a church service. And he got, with the money, he thought he was going to go out and buy smack with after church. She gave him the money to go up and take me to the church. Then she gave him the money to make the altar call. Well, it stuck. He went up there for the money, but God got him. Come on. I tell you all the time, you want to bring somebody to church and they don't want to come, pay them. It changed the world. There's rock churches all over the world because his sister invested 20, 10, what was it? How much was that? $20 to bring her brother to church his first day out of prison. John Jemina started churches literally all over the world. But this man was so humble. He would sit in meetings. All, I mean, I have a chauffeur, so I know this. We're sitting in meetings with some of the biggest names, pastors around. We're sitting in one. We're getting ready to go to Washington and do Washington for Jesus. And he started. And we're sitting in the meeting years later. It's the second one. Bill Bright was there. Bill Bright's running the meeting. Or talking about unity and unity this and unity that. Bill Bright says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now you got to understand, Bill Bright wasn't necessarily into the giftings. Thus saith the Lord, very straight laced. He turned around to Brother John. He said, Brother John, what's the Lord say? We got, we got Mr. Unity sitting with us. He ain't opening his mouth. So he gets up and says, you asked me, the Lord would say this. And he started prophesying about going to Washington again. And the whole body grabbed a hold of it, and they took it back to D.C. for the second time. The first time we went, in 1980, President Reagan pardoned Bishop on his way out in 84 of all of his crimes and said it wasn't for Sister Ann and Brother John, the right wing would never have started in the Republican Party. It was birthed with Reagan. Election. Reagan said, I would never have been elected if it wasn't for Washington for Jesus in 1980. He pardoned. The president gets four, is it, or six? Four pardons on the way out, and one of them was my pastor. He could, Brother John did all that and couldn't vote, had no rights to vote. Couldn't drive a car, had no right to get a driver's license, and he was affecting the world. You talk about a man with a broken heart, broken spirit, but he knew the power. You could sit here and think, well, I'm just a kid. I'm just a teenager. I'm just a housewife. I, 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 I'm a security guard. I'm a, I flip hamburgers. I'm a bug man. I kill bugs. I'm a, I'm a contractor doing more janitorial work and, 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 and what's the word? Uh, maintenance work. I am doing that kind of work. God says you're a child. I detail cars. Come on. I, who am I? Your heirs, hear this, to the throne of God. Who are you? You're part owner of everything. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I got more, but I'm done. I want you to hear this. You walk like you're a nobody. God will lift you up. He'll give you your moment in the prime life if you want it. If this is the only church I ever get to preach in the rest of my life, I'll be tickled pink. My pastor called me this morning. He heard what happened. And Pastor Lou and I got a joke about it. He said, my God, another one for your book. 
You need to put it in your book. Another story for one time I, I went to get I went to get fast food. I'm walking out of Wendy's and I walked around walking in front of the car by the drive thru and a woman wasn't paying any attention. I had all of our food from going to back to church. A woman wasn't paying attention and ran me over, hit me, threw me up in the air. And I went back and told him I'm a bruised one honey from here all the way down. I let her go. So I got up, I felt pretty good, but when I got back to church, I'm like, Why I'm hurting? I went and checked, I was literally bruised from here all the way down to my ankle. Pastor went, only you, Brian, could walk out of Wendy's and get run over by a car. <laughs> Anybody still want to fly with me yet? <laughs> I, you'll get a story. You want a story, you'll get a story. Amen. Wayne, Wayne and Diane said, I don't even want to drive with him next week. Amen. <laughs> I heard it. With my deaf ear, I heard it, brother. But God, but God, I know what I am, saints. I know who, whose I am. I know what I am. But what I'm learning is whose I am. And it still keeps me broken because he can just say, okay, son, you think you're somebody? America, you don't want prayer in schools anymore? You don't want me in your Congress? You want to take me off of your money? You want to remove me from your Pledge of Allegiance? All right, America, I'll do that. All of a sudden, he goes, and two planes fly into towers. And Congress starts crying out, oh, God. God says, all right. Drops his hand, and a third plane gets knocked out of the air. Saints, you hear me? You're only who you are because God's got purpose for you. Let's stand up and go home. You all with me? Keep your heart broken, Caleb. Don't you ever think, I don't care where God uses you around the nation, this is the most teachable young man I've ever been around in my life. He never questions things that we do. He, is one, he comes in saying, Pastor, explain to me so I can learn. Not that I'm questioning you. He wants to know why we put a limit, why we charge people for, say, a minimum of $5 donation on the, piece, on the chili. Well, Pastor, why do you do that? How many people know if I, didn't, I just put donation? There are some people that will just throw 50 cents in and walk away. He went, no, they won't. I went, there are. And they're in the church. Wait, not in this church. They're in the church. I hope you do more than the five dollars, because half of it's going there, and I owe Brother Mike five hundred dollars. I'm going to pay him back out of it. I promised him I'd pay half of his trip, and I haven't been able to do it yet. I'm telling you, Brother Mike, I'll take it out of my own pocket. You're going to get that five hundred dollars. That's a problem we got at the church. I'll give it to you. But I want to wait for this thing, because half of it's going to. This usually, usually is a missions thing. I'm trying to get it where each kid gets to go to camp where a parent doesn't have to pay more than, at least, no more than half of it, of the cost. It costs $200 to go, and the church is trying to raise half of it across the board. I think that's a good deal, don't you? Some, some parents cost them a whole lot more than it does other parents. If, you've, if you bought one of those children for your work day, pay. Don't bid, they don't, don't bid not pay. If you can't do it, release them. Let, let, let Caleb know. If you can't afford it, release them. My, we, we haven't done it yet, but I, I told Kim, we want Caleb, I mean, we want um, Drake, and we want the two girls. Whatever they rent it for, we're going to pay for it. Put the two girls out front doing the, the, uh, weed, and the weeding and the mulching. And Drake, where are you? Do you hear? He's hiding. Oh, boy, are you in for it. Now, to ask Chris. He'll tell you, man. <clears throat> now, Chris is working full time. He went. <laughs> you guys with me? You hear me? Stay broken so God don't have to break you. And I'm telling you, the greatest place to be broken. Let me close with this. I'm closing with 2 Samuel. 622, he says, 
and will I yet be more evolved than this, will be, and will be based in my own sight. Now the man's servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I have an honor. Keep your honor broken. Today, and I'm releasing you, you can go. If you have to go, God bless you. But if you know you've walked around thinking you're more than you should think, or you know you, you, sometimes you just know who you are in God. I got more in me than some people got of God. I'm just going to ask you today just to take a step to the altar and surrender every gift you have. You can come play. Every gift you have, everything you are, on your way out. You walk out here and you got to leave, come up here and pray and go out that door, but lay it down at the altar. Can I have some of the musicians come forward, please? Oh, she, she got on. You can get on. And, and you sing something. Come on up. Any musicians? I'm just going to ask you to come to the altar and lay everything you have down. Now, allow the Spirit of God just to cause you to be... What's the word? Humility? Humble. Thank you. Before you leave this place today. And don't pick it back up. And don't forget, if you're sticking around for baptism, we got directions, or you see us after the service. I love you all. Please hear me, I love you. More now than you ever understand. After Friday, when I sat in that boat, I saw so many of your faces, and I thank God that you're in this church every day. I love you too, very much, very much. Back behind you are two of my friends that I love very much too. One of my best friends in the world. This guy over here, Oh, there's so many of you. I can point to so many of you. Sweetheart, I'm so glad to see you in the house of God. You just don't know. It does my heart good. And every time I see you back here, there's so much in you. And I want you to raise that baby in the ammunition of God. David, God bless you, buddy. Nancy, thank you so much for who you are. I love you, sweetie. Let's worship the Lord. Please come to the altar before you leave. Don't walk out of here thinking you've got it all under control because there ain't nobody got that much control. Your love is pure. Your love is precious. Your love is all I